Hi there, today I'm very happy to introduce you to what have become my favorite pants, the Dorita pants. Straight legs, a very high waist, and they are tight, so they are fairly sexy I'd say, but they also are somewhat formal and classy, they've got a tailored twist to themselves partly given by this fold in the middle that you'll have to press down yourself and the very cool thing about them is that you can wear them with so many different shoes and tops and even if the shoes and the tops are not formal themselves they're still gonna look good with the whole outfit I'm gonna right away tell you about the difficulty of sewing these pants okay they have darts and have a waistband so it's a bit more difficult than sewing pyjamas or joggers or leggings but they don't have any pockets as you can see so that makes it very easy um, the thing that is a bit difficult though about these pants is as often <laughs> with sewing picking the right fabric and here it's a bit complicated because these pants require a stretchy fabric and from one fabric to another the amount of stretch is gonna be always a bit different so in order to try and guide you through finding the right fabric which was gonna be a fabric that's got similar stretch and firmness of stretch to the one that I picked I have prepared here a little cheat sheet I don't know how you call that here on my table I've got a sheet on which I have drawn a rectangle which has got 10 centimeters outside then you've got lines here on the side and they are one centimeter from one another this is my benchmark fabric here it's marine synthetic one see the way it moves it moves so well it's kind of jello like now i'm gonna take the fabric my fabric and i'm gonna place it on the square i'm gonna hold it on one side and with the other hand i'm gonna pull it as much as I can and I'm gonna see to which point can it be extended and stretched out so this fabric I wrote it here already pretty much extends two centimeters away from the box which means that it's got about 20% of stretch okay and 20% of stretch doesn't mean it's got 20% of elastin in it it's not related so now I take this other fabric and I do the same. I place it and I pull. We got about the same elasticity. So that one, that one feels a bit easier to stretch out. According to the test, it looks like these two fabrics have the same elasticity, but it's not the case. When I was sewing the pants with this fabric, as I'm gonna do right now in the tutorial, even though I had taken the same size, I had taken a 36 with this fabric and with this fabric, the result with this fabric was too big. The thing is, on top of the stretch being identical, there is something that was not identical, which was the firmness. So how much strength do you need to put in in order to stretch out that fabric? This fabric is fairly easy to stretch out to its maximum. And this one has the same maximum, but it's, it's harder. I need to put more strength, you know? So the result is that the pants in this fabric are more hugging and they're like more push up. <laughs> and in this one it's a bit looser it's more flexible conclusion in any case you want to take a fabric that includes elastin in it how much percent of elastin do you need about three to five percent you can take polyviscose viscose crepe some wool with elastin for a luxurious version twill fabric with elastin i have to say that i don't find it easy to find these sorts of fabric in regular fabric stores for some reason at least in france i go to a fabric store and they never really have those fabrics that clothes are made of in the shops which is the reason why i'm thinking maybe of selling tested and approved fabric for this project um, if you're interested in that idea then you can look in the description box or you can follow me on instagram to be in the know of when such a thing might happen all right, so <laughs> let's move on and let's look at the supplies that you'll need to sew the pens and also at the pattern itself. So here are the parts of the pattern. The legs are up there. Only the back of the legs are on the table, but of course the front is also to be cut. Then you've got the waistband, which I have packed with interfacing, non-stretchy and woven. And then we have the fly facing cut once, backed with interfacing as well. And the fly guard cut twice, mirrored. Finally, the zipper, 15 or 16 centimeter long. So let's prepare the parts before sewing them together. First, let me show you the two front parts. What I'm pointing at right now is the zipper extension, which sticks out by five millimeter. It was originally on both front parts, but I cut it off on the right front. I'm showing here that I have reinforced my edges with interfacing tape. 
And by the way, you want to stick the interfacing closer to the edge than I did, because you have to stitch on it and not next to it. Now I'm going to take care of my fly guard. So you lay the two parts on one another and you sew along the curved edge. Then you turn inside out, you sew along the straight edge, then you finish the edge. I'm also going to finish the edges of the other parts. I do the legs. You have to be careful to go around the zipper extension on the left part and not chop it off. If you're afraid, you can always remove the blade just for it. I'm doing the fly facing, but not all edges because in some spots it's not necessary and it creates more thickness. So to see which edges I didn't finish, please observe the screen. Let us sew the darts. Nothing very new nor very thrilling here. So I press them down towards the center for the back parts and outwards for the front parts. All right, let's do the exciting part now. Let's sew the zipper to the fly guard. You want to pin so that you leave one centimeter of seam allowance at the top above the zipper teeth. I sew close to the teeth. Now I take the left part of the front, so the one bearing the zipper extension. I have pressed it down. I'm gonna pin it to the zipper and I'll sew here in the crease. I take the right leg, I lay the fly facing on it, I sew, I press down and I top stitch. Now my left part goes on my right part, right side touching. I'll pin the two parts carefully so they're precisely on top of one another. And now I'll sew the seam under the zipper. You want to start it where your zipper teeth end or begin. As you can see, I didn't go all the way down with my seam because I've seen this in a few tutorials out there, but mm, I think it doesn't matter. You can just sew all the way down. I'll pin the zipper to the fly facing and I'll sew close to the edge. I have printed this part of the front again so I can cut it. I'll use it to trace my front seam. I add a few pins so the layers don't move I actually had to repeat this step because my fabric had moved and it didn't look straight. So take your time since it's a seam that will be visible. Also, don't pull on the fabric when you sew. And the fly is done. I'll pin the legs to one another. Et voilà. Hello there, again. So we're almost done with the pens. This is what we have now. Wrong side is facing you. We're missing two things to finish the pens. First is the waistband and seconds are the belt loops, which you don't even have to sew if you don't want to, because they're ornamental, they're not necessary, since these are tight pants. I am now going to try the pants on, and I also recommend that you do it right now, so that you can adjust some things if necessary. I already have tried the pants on, and I could witness at this occasion that the pants are too big, even though I've made two previous versions that were also in the same size, that fit perfectly. So the reason is, that I changed fabric between the one that I used previously to develop the pattern and now. I'm gonna try the pants on right now, so you're gonna see how much bigger uh, they are. And then I'm gonna show you how to solve this little issue and you're gonna be able to see that it's not really a big deal. Okay, so here are the things that I don't like. First of all, this should be really tight. It's not too bad, but I would like them to be really tight. They, they should be like hugging me, you know? They should be pushing me up. So the sides here need to be tighter. No, I, I like tight stuff, like, like this, real tight. Then if it's not tight, the problem is also that you get this little, uh, in French, is called a moustache. 
if I pull, can you see, it should, the fabric should be tense. All right, so I'm about to baste the pants on the side to try and reduce their width. You put the stitch length on the highest possible, then we're gonna pick the straight stitch. I picked some white threads. And if reducing the pants on the side by one centimeter, if this is enough, then I'm gonna sew a normal one, permanent seam. It's a bit loose here. Um, in the front, I think it looks good. I think the moustache are doing better, as you can see here. The pants are pretty comfortable as they are, so um, I'm just gonna check. I'm gonna remove some more width, and I'm gonna try it again, and we'll see how it fits. I'm using my foot's width to remove some excess and it's gonna be, yeah, seven millimeters wide, so times two, it's gonna be 14 millimeters that I'm removing from the girth of the pen. Okay, I have removed another 14 millimeters of each side. Let's see. Can I still move? It's okay. Sorry for showing my ass like that, but it's kind of important we're doing some fittings right there. Alright, sorry for the close-up on my ass. I'm kind of happy like that. So I removed a total of two centimeters and four millimeters on each side. I've replaced the basting by a permanent seam and I finished the edges with my overlocker. This means that we can move on to the waistband. I'll start by making the belt loops. On the pattern, you've got a long strip. Uh, you can cut five pieces of it and make the belt loops as I did, or you can sew the long strip first, turn it inside out, and then cut it in five smaller strips, which might be a bit more time efficient. Once the belt loops are ready, I'm pinning them in place. I'll place them above the dots and I'll sew them in the seam allowance. Now the waistband itself. So I have the band in front of me. I'm gonna make sure that the left side notches are on my left and I'll fold my band on one edge over one centimeter. I press down and then I fold in the middle, wrong sides together. I'll pin right sides together and I sew the sides. Once it's done, I turn inside out. Pay attention to the notches once again to pin the waistband in position and I'll sew all around. Here's what you should get. I pinned the waistband to the inside and also on the right side of the fabric close to the edge. and I sew the other end of the belt loops. I tried the pants on and I added pins at my ideal length. And then I made an invisible hem and I pressed my legs down so as to get a central fold in the middle of the legs. And finally the buttons. So there will be two buttons, one here and another one here. I trace the buttonholes based on the measurements of my buttons. I make the buttonholes with my machine. I cut the hole with my seam ripper. And oh my god! The pants are done! Okay, let's look at the result. I am pretty happy with them. 
The moustache don't bother me at all. In fact, I didn't even think of them. It doesn't feel super tight, even though it looks fitted. The only thing is that when I narrowed the legs, I also narrowed the waist along with it. And I should probably not have removed that much at this area. Yeah, I'll know for next time. So um, we're done with sewing the pants. I am very happy with them. Hope you like them. I like them a lot. I've worn the sample version a lot ever since I made it and I've gotten lots of compliments on them, so um, I'm very happy about them. Well then, I'll see you soon for another video. My next video also are going to be some pants, uh, high-waisted as well, but not tight. I hope you have a nice rest of the day and uh, you take care.